thank you. Uh, so uh, we we tried doing this to tweaking uh, the uninitialized warning to emit fewer uh, as few false negatives as possible. Uh, we did it as a part of, of a larger effort concerned with undefined behavior in, in the and handling of it in the compiler. So as you know, reading from an uninitialized variable is undefined behavior. Uh, the, so the issue, well, uh, when, when I refer to uninitialized warning, I mean uh, all of it. It, uh, it has two flags, the W uninitialized and W may be uninitialized. I, I mean them both. Um, and so it has um, uh, false negatives. Uh, it's well known and also it only works uh, when optimization is enabled. Uh, and before I show any of the code, I must say that none of it is intended uh, to go anywhere. This is uh, just an experiment. Uh, so uh, the idea is uh, that um, some passes uh, perform uh, optimizations based on undefined behavior. They um, conceal unde undefined behavior, so the original instance of an undefined behavior might not be detectable anymore. Uh, and uh, the idea uh, is pretty simple of uh, what we have done. Uh, first, uh, move, uh, move the warning pa pass as early as possible in the compilation pipeline. Uh, and then, uh, expectably, uh, we, we got a lot of uh, false negatives. Uh, and uh, we gradually suppressed those by adding uh, some of the passes before the warning pass. Uh, kind of, uh, and the premise was uh, the, the passes we added uh, were kind of considered not, not to do nasty uh, things uh, with undefined behavior. Uh, also, yeah, uh, testing was done on a gentle uh, distribution of 47 core packages, and in the retrospect, uh, well, it was very useful, but um, uh, pr pr predictably, it uh, w w was also not not a very good idea because uh, those are very well tested packages, uh, very robust software that uh, probably runs uh, through static analyzers. So we didn't get much, uh, many new uh, true uh, positives uh, that the vanilla compiler misses. But we got, I think, uh, three. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, this is basically the patch. Uh, and as you can see, the late uninitialized pass runs very late. Uh, and uh, it is moved. Uh, very early, right after building the SSA form, and then uh, different passes are added before it. Uh, this is actually the main outtake. We we found one pass that <laughs> that, uh, that performs uh, optimizations ba based on undefined behavior, and that is the conditional constant propagation pass. This is uh, the infamous PR. Uh, what happens here is uh, when uh, the conditional constant propagation engine sees uh, an undefined value merge uh, with a constant, it merges it into that constant. Uh, so uh, the undefined behavior is not visible anymore to the subsequent passes. Uh, another pass uh, we added before the warning pass is uh, local pure const, uh, just for uh, for this kind of uh, cases uh, where the user did not specify, uh, did not declare a function as no return, even though uh, it, it, it is. Uh, so if it happens to be in the same translation unit, the compiler can infer that information for them and pr prevent uh, false negative from, from, from arising, sorry, false positive. Uh, now, well, SSA is not uh, actually the beginning of the pipeline. Before that, we have 
a front end and a gimplifier. And uh, uh, this is a folding um, uh, you see of a truth and if expert into truth and expert uh, that does not preserve the conditionality of uh, the use of M2 here. So in the in the snippet above M2 is used conditionally and uh, in the below one it is always used and this is um, uh, of course a false positive which uh, you can see with the main line unless you specify O2 optimization level. Uh, all right, thank you. Uh, another pass, another of the passes we added was uh, splitting critical edges. And this is um, actually needed. This is an, an implementation detail of the initialized warning pass. Uh, it's needed for convenience uh, to have the API of this function uh, here simpler. So it could always accept a basic block instead of sometimes accept a basic block and sometimes an edge. So in the case of a fee operand, uh, if a use is a fee operand, uh, then we need to know where it comes from. So uh, suppose it comes from the red edge here. Uh, so in case we don't have any uh, critical edges, uh, we can uh, represent uh, this edge with the, the above basic block unambiguously. Because a critical edge uh, is an edge that has um, where the, the, there are at least uh, two edges coming into the receiver block and at least two edges leave uh, the origin. So in this case, if the dashed edge is present, uh, then the edge is critical. If it's not, uh, then it's not critical. When, well, uh, because if there's a fee then, and it's not a de degenerate, then mm, there are at least two edges entering the below block. So, and at the same time, so yeah, it makes it possible to unambiguously identify the edge via the basic block. Uh, so, as for the rest of the passes, uh, we can say that they simplify the flow of control so that the uninitialized warning pass is less confused. Uh, do keep in mind that uh, the, this pass is based on heuristics uh, and it, uh, it is not hard to confuse it. One minute, all right. Uh, so, uh, moving the pass early, uh, revealed some latent bugs uh, in the pass. Uh, some of them got fixed. Uh, but apart from that, we also spotted uh, a documentation bug. Uh, you can see it if you open uh, your copy of the GCC manual. Uh, it says that W uninitialized warning also uh, performs what W clobber does. Um, and uh, this uh, has not been so for a very long time. Uh, this is... Uh, a little archaeology shows uh, where when this line got added, uh, and um, it predates 3SSA. And uh, currently, uninitialized is implemented on 3SSA, and it used to be on RTL. Uh, WClobbert is still on RTL, and so we got thinking, uh, well, maybe maybe it would be better off implemented on Gimple. Uh, it's not exactly a new idea, but uh, we did it and uh, we like the results and hope to publish the patch soon. So that's it. Thank you. Any questions? Um, so first, yes, please submit that patch. <laughs> um, sure. More interestingly, uh, Martin Seabor recently posted a patch which allows us to add a warning into the IL, which I believe will address a lot of the problems you're looking at. So essentially when we do an early uninit analysis and we find something that's potentially uninitialized, in the IL we can actually have the warning show up there. And I think most of what you're trying to solve will be addressed by doing something along those lines. 
And it's something that, that I've been hoping to poke at uh, over the last several weeks and just not had, had the time. Um, but it is, it is a class of problems that's classic in GCC, and Martin's work has the potential for really making this a hell of a lot better. Yeah, I, I would like to see that. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you very much for your talk. Unfortunately, we're out of time for extra questions, but round of applause, please. Thank you.